You may have noticed that vampires just may be my favorite subgenre of horror to watch. So I don't say this lightly when I say that I believe that Fright Night is quite possibly the greatest and best vampire movie ever made. A strong claim, I know, so I must also say that Fright Night is the best one that I have ever seen, while also fully admitting that I have not seen every vampire movie ever made in existence. I can, however, confidently say that I have seen all the great classics of the genre, and in my opinion, Fright Night stands above the rest of them in terms of story, effects, soundtrack, and characters. Made in 1985, and expertly written and directed by Tom Holland, the story of Fright Night contains what I believe to be the perfect structure of any classic vampire story. A vampire, with an unassuming name of Jerry Dandridge, moves in next door. Our young hero, Charlie Brewster, played by William Ragsdale, discovers the vampire's secret. The hero makes themselves a target and seeks out the help of an expert. And then lastly, the hero and expert face off against the evil vampire for one big final climactic confrontation. Add all those together for your story, and you have Fright Night. This is a story that works so well they repeated it almost exactly in the next three Fright Night movies, and two of those were remakes. Since this particular story structure works so well, those movies actually turn out to be pretty damn entertaining to watch on their own. I recommend them. Seriously, there is not a weak movie in this entire series, which is pretty rare for a horror franchise, and even rarer for remakes. That's just how much this entire story structure is a joy to watch for vampire fans. Fright Night also boasts some of the best practical effects work of the 80s that continue to stand up today. There's just something about the use of good practical effects versus the use of CGI that make a movie that much more immersive for the viewer, and the use of the effects in Fright Night really help to make the movie that much more believable and fun to watch. My favorite example of this has to be when they kill the main vampire's minion and familiar Billy, who must be some type of ghoul or golem, considering the way that he dies shows that he's clearly not a human. The melting of his body and decomposing of his bones is beautiful to watch, knowing that the effects were all done practically. Fright Night is also one of the first films to give its vampires monstrous faces instead of just plain old fangs, so the viewer never forgets that these charming and sexy creatures are truly monsters at heart that should be feared. The vampire mouth effect used on Amy was a last minute decision, and the prosthetic that they made turned out great for the promotion of the film, since that is the image that is most prominently displayed on the great poster for the film. The 80s gave us some great horror movie posters, and Fright Night is truly one of the best ones among them. One look at it, and you can tell exactly what this movie is all about. The soundtrack for Fright Night also has some great 80s sound throughout it. The dancing at the nightclub showcases some of the best music in the whole movie. It's also a universal law that almost every vampire movie needs a dance scene at a nightclub. This one does a fantastic job of setting the tone of the scene by having Jerry using his vampire mojo to seduce the young and virginal Amy while some of the best 80s synth and pop sounds are playing. Jerry even plays some pretty pimping music later when he's getting ready to seduce and bite Amy. You gotta love a villain who plays his own soundtrack. Speaking of Jerry, he is played to absolute perfection by Chris Sarandon, who is most well known for his roles in The Princess Bride and Child's Play. He's perfectly charming, well-dressed, sexy, and completely in love with being evil. This is not a tortured vampire who hates the curse of what he has become. He relishes in his predatory instincts to hunt and kill. When he sees something he wants, 
He goes after it and won't let anything get in his way. He knows he's the apex predator, and as such he has no fear of the boy Charlie who discovers his secret, or the actor vampire hunter Peter Vincent that Charlie turns to for help. Peter Vincent is also the best and most memorable character in the movie, played by Roddy McDowell. At the start of the movie, he's just a classic horror movie host and actor who used to star in a bunch of B-films as a vampire killer, similar to the famous Van Helsing from Dracula, a clear reference to when the role of Van Helsing was played by Peter Cushion in the Hammer films. He now hosts the horror program Fright Night, where the film gets its title from. Charlie just so happens to be a big fan of the program, so when he discovers that a real-life vampire has moved in next door to him, he seeks out the help of the horror hosts for slaying the beast. Peter Vincent shows great character development while first being in denial that a real vampire actually exists, to then being scared out of his mind, and then facing his fear and letting himself become the character for real that he played for so long. In many ways, it is the character of Peter Vincent who undergoes the classic hero's journey tale that many classic stories use, instead of the main character of Charlie Brewster. There are many moments where Peter Vincent summons the strength to face his fears and to continue on in his mission to slay the evil Jerry Dandridge slowly becoming more and more like the character that he has only just played for so long. Make no mistake about it, the face-off between Peter Vincent and Jerry Dandridge is the one element that completely makes the film a superior work of the genre. You're out of time, Mr. Dandridge. Look over your shoulder. <laughs> I also have to mention Charlie's best friend, Evil Ed, played by Stephen Jeffries. He's the first person that Charlie turns to for advice on dealing with a vampire next door, and is played delightfully somewhat over the top. He's a very loud personality, and is a great supporting character who suffers tragic circumstances later in the film. Jerry eventually turns him into a vampire, and when Evil Ed is finally slain by Peter Vincent, he suffers one of the longest and most drawn-out deaths in the movie. That doesn't stop the character, though, from providing us with a little stinger at the end of the movie using one of his iconic lines from earlier to end the movie with. <laughs> oh, you're so cool, Brewster! <laughs> the biggest thing I find that Fright Night has whenever I rewatch it is that it has practically everything that you could ask for a vampire movie to give you. Fantastic practical effects? Check. Great cast of characters? Check. Sexy love scenes? Check. A soundtrack that sets the perfect mood? Check. A strong, sexy, and powerful main vampire bad guy? Check, check, and check. It has all of that to go along with a great and satisfying story that can be appreciated by anyone at any age. I rewatch it more than a few times a year and will continue to do so. I can't say that it's my top favorite vampire movie to watch, since that's a personal choice that can change depending on my mood for that particular day. I can confidently say, however, that it is in my mind and in my view, the best vampire movie ever made. For now. I am, of course, always looking forward to the next vampire movie that's yet to be released, just right around the corner. Oh no, it isn't. It's Peter Vincent, vampire killer! Oh, you're so cool, Brewster! <laughs> Hello, Charlie. What's the matter, Charlie? Scared? What could be more important than my autograph? Welcome to... Right night.